Germany, it's a must. Every knee must be templated. Nowadays, you can do it digital, like it is shown here, but you can still also do it um, manually as it's done over the last decades before. But I think it is important to have a plan on how many millimeters you want to resect on your lateral uh, tibia and then where is my tibia uh, uh, placed. And if you have a medial defect here, then if you resect nine millimeters once in a while, this tibia, primary tibia is in the air, then you need to be prepared for some additional maneuvers like bone augmentations, metal augmentations, stems and all that. But also templating on the lateral view is very important to give you a, a good impression of the size of your femoral component. So you want to rebuild the anatomy of that femur. So it is very important to restore the posterior offset. Um, so that is the distance from your posterior shaft to the posterior edge of your femoral condyle. That determines how much the knee can flex. So if you lose here some millimeters, you also will lose some flexion. Now a bit on the factors for success. So if you have a valgus knee like that, you want to correct that valgus axis to a straight axis, but also the ligaments here and that knee, everything is tight on the lateral side, everything is loose on the medial side. In the end, in the uh, straight leg, must be the same amount of stability on the medial and on the lateral side in extension and throughout the entire range of motions. And then, of course, you want to uh, have a good kinematic. And in, in the perfect uh, world, you also want to have a pain-free patient. But that also depends on a lot of patient factors, as I said in the beginning of the talk. So if you have picked the right patients, maybe you can be sure that he's also pain-free if you do a good job. So if we look at coronal anatomy, your tibia cut standard is 90 degrees, meaning 90 degrees to your axis of your um, tibia shaft. That's the um, conventional alignment we do, mechanical alignment. Nowadays, also uh, 87 or 88 is discussed for uh, surgeons who want to perform an anatomical or kinematic alignment. The femoral cut is done depending on the individual anatomy between three and eight degrees of valgus. The potential problems we have with the conventional technique that we are not able to perform our cuts in 100% of the cases correctly. So in 15 to 20%, we are a bit outside um, the um, range we want uh, normality normally to um, to reach and also an incorrect amount of uh, bone cut especially on the distal and the posterior femoral um, condyles by that we change the joint line that is uh, again a very important uh, problem or can be a very important problem so as i said i think pre-op planning is is, is very important um, to um, have to, to analyze the individual anatomy of, of the patient. So not every patient gets a nine millimeter cut on the lateral um, uh, tibia. If it's a very lax patient, maybe you resect a little less. And that's the same for the distal femoral condyle. Not everyone gets a nine millimeter cut. So if you have a lot of um, bone loss, uh, also a complete cartilage loss and a bit of bone loss on the medial femoral condyle, then maybe it's only seven millimeters. So that's, as I said, it's an individual planning um, that uh, should look at the individual anatomy. If we look at the sagittal anatomy, I mentioned the word posterior offset already. So here it is shown. So that's the distance between the posterior shaft axis and um, the most posterior um, part of your condyle. And you have also the anterior offset. That's um, the same to the anterior part of the knee. And then you have the overall um, uh, sagittal diameter. So the femoral sizing should restore the individual anatomy. 
and um, most of the knees have a slightly flexed uh, femur compared to the shaft axis. The problems you can create if you oversize or undersize your, your femur um, are enormous and um, that's the same for the tibia slope. Again, as I said, pre-op planning, very important. Not every knee is the same. The most important or the most critical factor is the femoral component rotation. The majority of surgeons place every femoral component in three degrees of external rotation, which is, if you look at the mean, correct, but only 40% of the knees have three degrees of external rotation. So that is the, the number you, you, see, you see here. So the relation between the epicondylar axis and the posterior condyle, the mean is three and a half degrees, but you have a range between one degree of internal rotation and 10 degrees of external rotation. So a lot of knees are in five degrees of external rotation, six or seven. Um, and beside that, uh, anatomical variability, you also have a, a lot of problems with the variability on, on the other anatomical landmarks, like the patella groove, uh, meaning that your wide side line in mean, yes, it is 90 degrees, but you see the range, that's huge. So it is very difficult um, to, to place your implant on, on these anatomical factors. And the, the other big problem is that it is very difficult to find the medial epicondylar and the lateral epicondyle in surgery correctly. Also the white side line and, and, and all that. So you have uh, quite a big inter-observer and intra-observer difference, even for the posterior condyles, which are the easiest to find of up to four degrees. And you see here in the white side line, the arrow is, is huge up to 24. Uh, degrees. So that means placing every femoral component in three degrees of external rotation, I think is not correct. Uh, you miss a lot of anatomical variability of your patients. And that for me is one of the main reasons um, for uh, this high rate of unhappy patients. So what you also can do, you can place your femoral component in the gap balance techniques. So here you place the femoral component in 90 degrees uh, of flexion parallel to your tibia. That gives you a balanced flexion gap. And that is important for the patient because he needs that stability in flexion to raise from the chair uh, and all the, those activities. That's a different technique compared to measured resection. I will talk about that uh, also in one, one or two slides then. And that technique, of course, you need to uh, release very early, otherwise there are changes on the rotation uh, later on. So that is a specific um, issue of that gap balance technique. So the other technique, as I said, measured resection, you resect what you replace. This is taken from, from another um, um, book. So, um, and then you adapt the soft tissue around your resected um, um, femur and tibia. But there's a lot of balancing in the end. And um, I think we do a lot of damage to the um, soft tissue, uh, doing it the other way around, placing the implant to the ligamentous frame of the knee, I think is the more um, biological way that reduces the number of soft tissue releases and by that also the pain and um, increases the option or the opportunity for early mobilization. 